I'm Kathleen Nessel. I'm the Living Arrangements Designer with the Original Designs team here at Rogers Gardens. Today we're going to talk about building a bird and butterfly garden. By creating a bird and butterfly garden in your yard, you're able to interact with a wide variety of species. And you're also creating habitat that can actually help sustain species that are threatened due to the fact that many people focus more on planting ornamental plants in your yard that have little or no value to the wildlife. Four important factors must be present to sustain your bird and butterfly garden. Food, water, shelter, and a place to raise young. Also, consider a relaxed garden. Don't focus too much on perfection and pruning and maintaining. Let your garden be free and natural and expect to have leaves being munched on by uh, caterpillars. Expect a fruit to be eaten by the birds. Uh, just keep it less tidy. Let some leaves lay on the ground. Let it emulate nature a little bit. Grow your garden naturally. Here at Rogers Gardens, we only sell organic products. We have a full horticultural team that's here to help you with any problems that may arise. But a well-designed garden with a lot of native plants needs a little intervention as far as chemicals. So let's attract some butterflies. You're going to need to provide a food supply for both the adult stages and the larval stage. And you'll also have some species-specific things to keep in mind. The monarch butterfly relies on the milkweed plant as a uh, host plant to raise its young. And the gulf fritillary will rely on the passion vine or the passion flower to raise its young. When searching for nectar plants to provide food supply for the adult butterflies, look for plants with a large landing pad, something that the butterfly can land on when it feeds. This is much more accommodating than a plant that might be more uh, accommodating to a, a hummingbird that's going to feed from hovering in the air. Focus first on native plants. Native plants will thrive in your garden with little care and attention. A native plant is going to be adapted to the soil in your area, it's going to be adapted to the climate in your area, therefore it's going to be less stressed and you'll have less need for um, a pesticide or an herbicide intervention. There's controversy brewing over the use of the uh, exotic milkweed. We do recommend planting the native milkweed because once again, this is most suitable to your garden and your microclimate. The exotic milkweed has its benefits as well. I encourage you to do some research and understand some of the challenges with the, monarch, or with the exotic milkweed uh, and use this as an accessory plant. Perhaps focus on your native milkweeds and supplement with your exotic milkweeds. But with some care and some caution and some understanding of the benefits and the disadvantages to this plant, I do believe it has a place in the garden. Native milkweed can actually be hard to find, but our buyers here at Rogers Gardens works, works closely with our growers to ensure we have a supply available for you April through September. Offer up a source of water, especially in dry areas like Southern California. A puddling pool is a great way to put some water out for your butterflies. Uh, find a sunny location, use a shallow bowl, perhaps a saucer from a planter. In that bowl include rocks, gravel, soil, sand. Um, these elements will actually introduce some minerals into the water and uh, just keep that, sh that puddling pool damp. Don't keep standing water in it, but this is a place where the butterflies can get some water and take up some minerals as well. What about shelter? Shelter is likely going to be naturally abundant in your yard, whether it's thickets of plants, uh, structures in your garden like arbors and gazebos. There are plenty of places for butterflies to tuck into with inclement weather coming up and also a place to, to shelter overnight. Attracting birds to the bird and butterfly garden. We should consider having a wide offering of foods for your birds. Bird feeders are one way to attract seed eating birds like our finches. Beyond a bird feeder, keep in mind that a lot of plants in the ground actually naturally produce a lot of seeds. So one of the reasons we don't want a very tidy garden is we want to allow flowers to bloom and go to seed and we want to leave those seed heads on the plants. This is a natural way for birds to come into your garden and eat seeds. Nest boxes can be a great accent in the garden and very functional as well, but not all birds are going to nest in a nest box. Many birds build their own cup nests. Um, hummingbirds are going to build their own nests in a tree branch uh, as well as an oriole will build a very elaborate woven pocket in a tree branch. But offer up a nest box and you'll see species like the bluebirds or a tree swallow. A bird bath can be a magnet for birds in the garden. A few things to keep in mind. Keep your bird bath shallow. You'll also want to keep your bird bath in an open area away from thickets of undergrowth where a predator could be hiding. So let's recap. Your goal with a bird and butterfly garden is to be, well, relatively imperfect. Start out small, add a bird feeder, add uh, some water, uh, add some plants that you like, focusing on the natives first and then supplementing with some non-natives. And remember, keep it simple. You don't want to spend too much time fussing over your garden. You want to spend time sitting back and enjoying the butterflies and birds that are visiting. Come to Rogers Gardens and check out our birds and butterfly display garden. We have six other display gardens throughout the nursery. Take a trip to Rogers Gardens. We're here to help you every step of the way. Mm -hmm.